guys, welcome back to my channel. The next sequel of iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro doesn't have that big change in terms of exterior, but I love it because they kept the square boxy design from the iPhone 12 with the smaller knots and all improvements are made under the hood. The color choices that they have this year is not really towards pro color, but I still prefer the Pacific Crew Red than this year blue. And Apple has finally listened to the fans. They bring the Pro Motion display, which is how Apple call 120Hz display. But it is not just normal 120Hz, it is adaptive to what content is displaying on the screen and will adjust from as low as 10Hz to 120Hz. As you can see on the video, the iPhone 13 Pro Max are much more smoother. This adaptive display will save your battery because you don't need 120Hz to be turned on when you're displaying some static image. Speaking of the battery, this is another department that has been improved by Apple. Gone is a day where the phone has to be thinner and thinner, Apple added more thickness in the new iPhone and even added 20 grams more weight to find place for the bigger battery. I have been daily driving iPhone 13 Pro Max in almost a month now and this is just simply 2 days battery life iPhone. As you can see here, most of the normal working days I end up my day at around 50%-ish with 4-5 to five hours of screen on time. And then some spike there, that was when I went to vacations. I take a lot of videos and photos using navigations and by the time I went back to the hotel, the battery was around 25%-ish left. Trust me, it is so good and I think most people who wanted to use the camera on this phone to make some videos will be in joy because they don't have to worry about the battery life anymore. The only thing that they need to worry though is the storage space. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. Apple announces many features on iPhone 13 for computational photography and videography. There is cinematic mode that is basically portrait mode on video but with smoother racking focus and limited to only 1080p 30 frames per second. I don't really work with 4K videos but at least 60 frames per second will be good, maybe? And there are another limitations on 128GB model. You can only record ProRes format video up to 1080p 30 frames per second, while the higher tier storage could go up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Now it starts going downhill from here. Although the camera hardware has been improved, the software is not so much. There is a new feature called photographic style that you can adjust your tone or color temperature on your pictures and it is not acting like a filter, it is more acting like a preset in Lightroom or if you have a DSLR camera, you might think of it as a, like a picture profile in there. And so if you like a Samsung's vivid colors or pixel contrasty looks, now you can apply this on your default camera app so the final pictures will always apply these presets. Another features that they bring are ProRes for video format and ProRAW for camera. So now Apple is now natively supporting raw image for camera, it will capture more data where editors or professionals could then adjust the image with more controls rather than using JPEG compressed image. Same thing with the ProRes video but it is basically easier to edit on ProRes format especially if you use Final Cut Pro. So in my opinion it will be best if you buy the iPhone 13 Pro with at least 256GB of storage to gain the maximum potential of it. Other than improving on the software sites only, Apple also has improved on the hardware sites, especially in the ultra-wide camera. Apple has improved the ultra-wide camera with faster aperture f1.8 compared to the f2.4 on the previous generations. It also now includes a macro camera inside the ultra-wide, so the macro lenses using 12 megapixel, which is very clear compared to the 2 megapixel macro lenses that's usually in the Android phone. And the main sensor now has sensor shift stabilizations in all iPhone 13 lineup, which improves the low light photography and also more stable videos without using any additional tools. I mean, look at the sample shot straight from the iPhone without any edit. So far, I really like the design of the iPhone 13 with the improvement under the hood on display, camera, and battery departments. It is really good, a little bit of complaints on the weight a little bit, but after getting used to it, it's fine. I just upgraded from the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 13's camera has been really good. What's not good though is the notch. I know they shrink it down a little bit but there's no additional information there other than just your focus mode or do not disturb mode that will appear now on the top left corner 
and it's slightly taller. They also still kept the lightning port on their Pro model in iPhone, while moving the other Pro model to USB-C that has faster file transfer rate. Like for iPad and MacBook Pro, they all have USB-C. And even if the display is battery smooth and you can see the animations clearly and makes your iPhone 10 feels like it's stuttering but it's not because it's running on 60 Hz, I still miss the 3D touch. Now, although the battery life is amazing that you don't have to carry it even you're in remote islands, it charges really slow even with 20 watt fast charging. Now, that's all I have in my in-depth review on the iPhone 13 Pro. Hope these videos can help you guys to make decisions if you're planning to buy or just want to get some information. And you can leave a further questions in the comment sections down below and don't forget to subscribe.